In this series of videos, we're going to focus on Le Chatelier's principle, which is arguably the most important single concept in the dynamic equilibrium unit. Le Chatelier's principle states that whenever an equilibrium is subjected to a stimulus, which is any change that comes from outside of the reaction itself, the fact that it is in equilibrium will attempt to reverse whatever that change is. A philosophical maxim that simplifies this states that whatever you do to a chemical reaction, nature itself, the equilibrium, will attempt to undo whatever this change is, maintaining a sense of balance. But what exactly does that mean? Well, we're going to first look at Le Chatelier's principle pertaining to temperature because understanding temperature is relatively straightforward because temperature is just a measurement of the average kinetic energy of all of our particles. So if we look at the philosophical maxim, whatever we do, nature will attempt to undo, if we increase the temperature of this reaction, the equilibrium will consequently try to decrease the reaction. Now, what does this mean in terms of the direction that our reaction will move? Well, if we want to decrease temperature, that will mean that we will naturally move away from the side that has delta H or shift towards the side with no delta H in the term. Uh, remember that delta H represents the energy that is either consumed by the reaction if it's an endothermic reaction or produced by the reaction if the reaction is exothermic. So if we say that the equilibrium will push the reaction towards the side without delta H, that would mean that the equilibrium would push the reaction toward our reactants and away from the products. This is because the reverse reaction here is an endothermic reaction, and if the reaction is reversed, that would mean that energy is consumed by the reaction, which would mean that temperature is going to decrease, and we can see that this is the opposite of the effect that we do. Why exactly does this happen, though? Because we can't rely on philosophy to understand the chemistry forever. So if we think about what temperature represents, remember that temperature is just the average kinetic energy, and if we increase the kinetic energy of an entire equilibrium system, that means that all of our reactants and products are now moving faster with more kinetic energy, which means that we now have more collisions, which means more chemical reactions. But since this is an equilibrium system where we have both forward and reverse reactions happening, this means that a temperature increase is going to cause both forward and reverse reactions to happen faster, which we can represent by drawing longer arrows showing that the reaction has sped up. However, do both the forward and reverse reactions benefit equally from this temperature increase? Uh, the answer to that would be no, and the answer to that has to do with delta H. So if we consider what delta H represents, remember that this represents extra energy that is either produced or consumed by the reaction. So let's look at the initial temperature increase, and let's say that that temperature increase benefits both the forward and reverse reactions equally because they all have the same temperature. Well, if we look at the forward reaction, the forward reaction is going to produce energy in the form of delta H. So because delta H is in the products, when the forward reaction happens more, which it will because of the temperature increase, this extra energy is going to produ be produced and is going to increase the temperature even more when the forward reaction happens, and this extra energy can feed back into the reaction and power the reverse reaction even more, speeding that up. But why doesn't this happen when going the other way? 
Well, it doesn't happen when going the other way because the reverse reaction actually consumes energy and that when the reverse reaction is sped up again because of this extra energy produced by the forward reaction, the result of this is that the temperature will actually decrease because this extra energy is being consumed by the reaction. So in other words, whenever a temperature increase happens, the side that contains delta H is always going to be sped up more than the rate of the other reaction. So therefore, the in this case, the reverse reaction, which happens to be the endothermic reaction, is going to benefit more. And this is why a temperature increase is going to push the reaction away from delta H because the extra energy from delta H is going to feed back into that reaction and push the reaction in the opposite direction. Temperature decreases are significantly easier to understand. Now again, if we start with the philosophical maxim, if the temperature is decreased, the equilibrium is going to try to increase the temperature in order to reverse that change. And we can follow that by saying that the way to increase temperature from that reaction is to shift toward delta H instead, because if we decrease temperature, the equilibrium will want to get the temperature back up, which means that it will want to do more of the exothermic reaction in order to produce more energy. But why exactly does this happen? Well, again, let's go and talk about rates. So if temperature is decreased, that means that both the forward and reverse reaction rates are going to occur slower. Now, remember that temperature is, as I've mentioned many times before, is simply a measure of the average kinetic energy of the reactant and product particles in a system, and therefore, if temperature decreases, the kinetic energy of both the reactants and products is going to decrease. Now, uh, if we look at the reaction, we can ask that same question again. Do the forward and reverse reactions decrease equally? Well, the answer to that is again no, but for a much easier to understand reason. If we take a look at the potential energy curve here, specifically if we look at the activation energy, we can see that the forward and reverse activation energies are definitely not the same. Now, if we decrease kinetic energy, that means that forming the activated complex, which again is the barrier between the reactants and the products, that means that forming the activated complex is going to be much harder to do because we have less kinetic energy to get our reactants to form the activated complex. However, we can see that the EA of the reverse reaction, which happens to be the endothermic reaction is significantly higher than the EA of the forward reaction, which is the exothermic reaction. Therefore, when we decrease temperature, because we're decreasing the amount of kinetic energy that part the particles have, it makes it almost impossible for the endothermic reaction to happen because we don't have enough kinetic energy in order to form the activated complex from the reverse. Therefore, endothermic reactions will always slow down more than exothermic reaction rates because once again, decreasing kinetic energy makes it much more difficult for the activated complex to form and endothermic reactions are much more affected by this because they need a much larger supply of energy. Now, if this is true, when the temperature decreases, that means the reverse reaction rate, because it is endothermic, is no longer possible to do. So the forward reaction predominates, producing energy, and therefore as more energy is produced, the temperature is going to increase as a consequence of this. So in conclusion, if temperature decreases in this reaction here, the reverse rate 
uh, let's write that more clearly, the rate of the reverse reaction decreases much more than the rate of the forward reaction. And since the forward reaction rate is faster than the reverse reaction rate, our equilibrium shifts to the products in this case, and more importantly, to delta H so that the temperature can increase and compensate for the original change. In the next video, we're going to examine the effects of Le Chatelier's principle regarding concentration and gas pressure changes.